This is what we're required. Uh, they tell us that a b is a diameter, a p is any chord you like, and then they put in a q so that what? What's a, what's special about chord a q? Because it's not just any chord. Yeah, very good. It bisects this angle here, which is why I've labeled them both as thetas. You could label them alphas or x's or whatever you wanted. Okay. Uh, and then the result they're th suggesting is, um, and I really love this. When I do a circle geometry question, I don't know what the answer is. I construct the, the diagram, and if I follow the steps, it just magically happens. Like, is, does it look like 90 degrees on your diagram? If you constructed a good diagram, it should look like a right angle. Okay. So we're trying to prove that that guy, I just named it t for tangent, is going to be 90 degrees. So what can we do? Um, people who got the solution have already made a construction. What construction did you join? Have a look. Yeah, you constructed a radius. Are you sensing a common theme here, right? When you don't know what to do, construct a radius. Um, OQ was the radius that most people constructed. Once you've got that, because this line here is the tangent at Q, then you know OQ is going to be perpendicular to this tangent at its point of contact, right? OK, so that looks good. Now, what else can you do? Well, in this triangle here where theta is, and you constructed this radius, well, what kind of triangle is this? It's isosceles. So you've got a base angle over here being theta. Does that make sense? OK, we're, we're almost there. We're so very close. Where can you lead me from here? Has anyone just seen it? AQT. That's going to be the complement of 90 degrees. Can you see that? 90 minus theta. Because um, OQT is another one of those right angles, and theta is over here. So 90 minus theta. And then you're pretty much home, aren't you? Because look, in this triangle AQT, right? I can say that um, theta plus 90 minus theta, that's the angle we just proved plus ATQ, which is our mystery angle, that should be 180 degrees. So the thetas cancel, like that, theta minus theta. You can subtract 90 degrees from both sides, and there is the required result, which is really nice and fun. Okay. So as a way to conclude, I actually want to show you um, a website I really like. It's um, <laughs> you'll. you'll you already think I'm a nerd because I'm a math teacher, because <coughs> I am. Um, but you'll be like, wow, you're even more nerd than I thought you were. So uh, this is a website made by a math teacher. Uh, and it's called, it's called Math with Bad Drawings because that is exactly what it is. You might have seen it before. Anyway, um, this post was actually written by this guy like literally just a couple of days ago. It's really new. And it just perfectly sums up what I hope you have all gotten out of this course. This um, blog post he wrote about is called The State of Being Stuck. So he met this guy named Andrew Wiles. Has anyone heard of that name before? Probably not. Andrew Wiles proved this theorem. Um, not this one. We know what this one is, right? This is Pythagoras, right? What Andrew Wiles proved was that if you take those powers and make them not twos, but um, threes, or fours, or five, or in fact any number bigger than two, then you will never, ever, ever, no matter what n you choose, no matter what a, b, or c you choose, you will never find solutions that are integers, that are whole numbers. Now, this is a really famous um, theorem because it was called um, Fermat's last theorem. Uh, Fermat was this famous uh, French mathematician. And he was like, oh, I proved this, but I don't have space to write it in my margin here. So you just won't, won't be able to find out. This stayed unproved for centuries. And then Andrew Wiles came along, and it took him a decade, basically, to prove this. Now, I just want to show you, hold on, let me find this spot. Uh, no, not that, not that, not that. Uh, no, no, hold on, is that, no? Aha, there we go. This is the picture I wanted to show you, okay? So, if there is one thing I have taught you in this course, I hope it is, when you're trying to solve a problem, right, and you are stuck, you're on a snag, you're like, I'm not making progress, okay? If you're not a mathematician, you just get angry and frustrated. And you're like, you flip the table, you walk off because you're like, I can't, I can't do it. Um, I give up, right? What makes mathematicians mathematicians is not that they're better with numbers or they're quicker or more accurate, but they say, okay, well, I'm stuck. Let me see what else I can find. Let me dig a little further. That's what this entire course has been about.